Okay, I've got a video idea. Using mainly spoons, we turn the channel into a Star Wars cooking channel. Spoons. All right, that's it. I'm out of ideas. Hey, uh, Psycho? What is it? It's, uh, it's Luke Skywalker. I, I, I think he's here to rescue you. It's who? He's here to rescue you. You know, uh, dude, he's actually a really good figure. Hey, uh, maybe for a video idea, we could, uh, review this. Okay, let me see it. Wow, yeah, this is really cool. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, okay, I have an idea. What if we do a review of this figure? Wow, what a great idea. Welcome back, everyone. I am Psycho Emerald, and Luke Skywalker is a character who needs no introduction. His iconic arc from a farm boy on the Lars homestead with his aunt and uncle to the Jedi Knight who brings Luke Skywalker back from the dark side and saves the galaxy has resonated with so many people over so many generations to where 40 years after Return of the Jedi released, he is still a very relevant character, even in current media today. And he's one of my personal favorite characters of all time. And I think that would go for most Star Wars fans is just, you can't go wrong with Luke Skywalker. He's just such an amazing character. And my personal favorite look for the character is his outfit from Return of the Jedi, specifically the end of Return of the Jedi. So when this figure was finally announced, I was really excited to have it in my Black Series collection. And it definitely hasn't disappointed me. It actually came to me at the perfect time when I was desperately in need of ideas for figures to review and things to do on the channel. So here we have this figure in my hands, just received it today as of recording this. And I've been having a lot of fun with it. Um, I had a lot of fun with the previous release as well, the one from The Mandalorian, and this figure shares a lot of similarities to that figure. Um, as far as the way it looks and the accuracy to Return of the Jedi, this is specifically his look from the end of the movie, during and before and after his duel with Darth Vader and the Emperor, and uh, it's really, really cool. The kind of black jumpsuit is a really slick look, I think. The belt with the silver belt buckle looks really nice, and the outfit is really well detailed on the figure. Um, the head sculpt looks really great. It is slightly different from the first release, which was very good too, but this one, this one is slightly different to be more accurate to the end of Return of the Jedi specifically. So, he also comes with a swappable chest plate or uh, front piece to his jumpsuit. So we have the blank black one, keeps that sleek black look all the way throughout the outfit. And then you can switch it out for the one where the kind of front flap of the jumpsuit here and the front of his shirt is kind of coming open and you can see a little bit of gray there, uh, which is from the end after the duel, after he's shocked by the Emperor, which is really cool. They had the attention to detail to include that. I believe they also included that with the original release um, way back when, when they did it. This is not a great figure from what I've heard. Um, and this is definitely a big upgrade from that. And as far as the articulation, like I said, this thing has been an absolute joy to post. Just to finally have this Luke that's just completely unhindered as far as articulation, because like I said, very sleek, slick black jumpsuit that he's wearing from the end of the film. That means that there's not really much in the way of the articulation, so all of this, the posability that's available on the figure is usable. It's not just there and then covered up by other pieces. We've had a lot of Jedi figures lately that I feel have also kind of fallen into this category of really cool figures, cool characters that are also really poseable um, because they have an outfit that doesn't hinder the articulation too much, such as Cal Kestis and Ezra Bridger. I think both of those recent releases have been awesome. I haven't done, I did do a review of Cal Kestis, but I didn't do one of Ezra and I probably won't, but I thought I'd mention that, that I think the articulation has been really, really incredible on a lot of these uh, Jedi figures lately. And this Luke is definitely no exception to that. The articulation was great on the first release. I really, really enjoyed it. And if you guys will remember, that one was on my 
um, top five list. Uh, but I think the articulation works so much better on this one. And he's just so much fun to pose because the butterfly joints aren't hindered. Same with the legs, they aren't hindered by anything since he doesn't have the tunic piece. It's just so much fun to pose. I did have to put him in a bit of hot water because the joints were very stiff when I got him out of the box. But as soon as I did that, uh, it was perfect. Just perfect. Everything worked so smoothly now. Um, but yeah, as far as, you know, putting the figure in hot water, maybe that's where the, uh, the cooking channel could come in. So yeah, incredible articulation, incredible detail. Just really a perfect, like, Luke Skywalker figure. Like, like I said, as much as I liked the other one, I think this one is possibly even more of a definitive Luke Skywalker than that one. I'm really, really enjoying having this figure so far. You know, if you're gonna keep talking about that figure, you may as well just review both of them at once. Hey, that's a really great idea. What? No, I, I was just joking. So now let's talk about the previously mentioned Luke Skywalker figure from the end of The Mandalorian. <sighs> Whatever. Now Luke Skywalker is a character that needs no introduction, and that's definitely how it felt in the end of The Mandalorian season two finale when he showed up. Everyone knew who he was, everyone was so happy he was there, myself included, of course. And of course we have to eventually get a figure from that, being as successful as that episode was and that show was, we're going to get a figure of Luke Skywalker, the most iconic hero from Star Wars, returning. Definitely gonna get a Black Series release for that, and we did. And uh, I was never really excited about this as a release from The Mandalorian. I was excited about it as a release for a return of the Jedi, Luke Skywalker. And that's really what this is, let's be honest. Like, if you look at the outfit in The Mandalorian and even on the box art, it is completely, well, not completely different, like just a casual fan glancing at it or maybe a, a, even a big Star Wars fan who's not super detail oriented is just gonna look at this and think it's the same. And that's totally fine but it just really isn't. Like it's more of a, he's got the dark gray tunic overlay going over his chest and torso, which we saw in the Jabba's palace sequences, but he doesn't have the silver belt buckle there, but where he does have it, he's on Endor. And I wouldn't have known any of this stuff. I'm not as detail oriented as some other Star Wars fans are, but of course the internet has opened my eyes to these flaws that this figure has, which I wouldn't really call it flaws if you just look at it as just a general Luke Skywalker figure. Well, not general Luke Skywalker. He was never really a general, was he? But you know what I mean, just a Luke Skywalker figure in general, like you're not really going to be too worried about that. But I think if it's supposed to be a Mandalorian release, uh, they could have done a figure for the Mandalorian. And I think what really happened here was this figure was originally meant to be a Return of the Jedi release, released with the HasLab uh, Rancor from Return of the Jedi. And uh, when that didn't pan out, they just re-released it as the Mandalorian version coming with the cloak which works, but it really isn't specifically made for the Mandalorian. And that really shows when you look at the differences between these outfits, because the outfit he had in the Mandalorian is very different. Like if you don't look at it too long, it looks the same. But if you really, if you actually look at the details, it is, it is completely different. So uh, as a Mandalorian Luke Skywalker figure, it is not accurate, but as a Return of the Jedi Luke, I think it's awesome. If you want like a Luke Skywalker from Return of the Jedi with that kind of gray tunic over his black jumpsuit, this is really, really cool. But if we wanna talk about the details that are the same on both figures, I believe it is the exact same belt and uh, the arms and legs are the same. And I believe the torso, if you took off the overlay on the uh, Mandalorian release, it would be exactly the same as this, obviously probably without the swappable chest piece. That's where we get to what I was talking about earlier, where this one is essentially just this one, but better. Like when it comes to the articulation, it's it's this one, but without all the hindrance. So if we look at what's different here, the arms, you can't really use the butterfly joints as well because the rubber tunic gets in the way and the legs, you can't lift them up as far because once again, the rubber tunic gets in the way. But I really love having both of these looks, but as far as articulation, this one is far, far superior. Something else I wanted to talk about kind of goes along with the details I was talking about earlier. They did specifically do a new hair piece for the Return of the Jedi Luke. So it is different from what we see on the Mandalorian release, which really isn't styled after the Mandalorian. It's more after the beginning of Return of the Jedi because it was meant to go with the Rancor and all that. So if you look at those side by side, you can see the difference, especially on the front, the way it's combed over, it's kind of falling more over his forehead on the Return of the Jedi release than it is on the Mandalorian one. The Mandalorian one is more neatly combed across his forehead because he hasn't been, you know, doing any uh, lightsaber dueling or getting shocked by lightning quite yet. 
But yeah, talking about the first one, uh, it is a very good figure. I really love it, and it really, it did a great job as my Return of the Jedi Luke for the display for a while. Um, I never really used it as the Mandalorian Luke. It does come with the cloak. Um, the cloak is it's pretty nice, um, but it, it's not really something I want to display on him when he looks so much better without it, in my opinion. So if you're looking for a figure of Luke Skywalker from the Mandalorian, I think there's a better option. And, you know, like the SH Figure Arts one I've heard is really good and it looks really good. They actually did like the haircut as, you know, what it looked like in the Mandalorian. And I think the outfit might be a little more accurate and might be pretty similar. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's more similar to Return of the Jedi than Mandalorian again, which I don't know why they keep doing that. But anyway, um, as far as this, if you're looking for one from the Mandalorian, this probably isn't the one, but if you're looking for a good Return of the Jedi Luke and you prefer the tunic look to the jumpsuit look, this one would be better. But I think I'm I'm definitely leaning towards the newest release. It has that classic like, final duo look for Luke Skywalker in his jumpsuit, and it has the two different options to have the, you know, almost kind of quote-unquote battle-damaged version with the flap coming off, or you could just have the blank regular version, which also looks really, really awesome. So yeah, I think for me, this is the definitive Return of the Jedi Luke. I like it much more than the first one, especially if we're talking articulation. The articulation is far superior because there's no hindrance to those butterfly joints or the leg movement or anything. It's just so much fun to post and I really, really like it. So yeah, overall, really love both of these, but if you're just gonna get one, uh, I would highly recommend the final dual version from the 40th anniversary line. Oh, and speaking of which, there's a card back. I forgot to mention that because I got all caught up talking about the figures, but the card back, really cool. That's going to pretty much wrap it up. If you guys enjoyed this review, please leave a like. I'd really appreciate that. Also, if you happen to like Star Wars The Black Series figure reviews, I do a lot of that on my channel. So if that's something you're interested in, please consider subscribing if you haven't already in order to join the army of the Knights of Mischief. And thank you, of course, for just watching the video. I really, really appreciate every one of you who even just does that. So I will see you all in the next one. Do you want to get that? Fine. Hey, what's up? Uh, I, I left a Luke Skywalker figure somewhere around here. Have you, have you guys seen it? Uh... Nope. Thank you guys all who have done so already and thank you for just